Hey, good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Ride Along Radio Show. The show where we give you the virtual experience of riding in a uh, police car with two veterans, two veteran officers, uh, two officers who were opinionated as hell <laughs> as police officers. When <laughs> we were to, those homeboys. That's right, that's right. Salty as deep blue sea. And uh, <laughs> uh, we, we didn't temper our mouths when we were supposed to. Right. So now that we don't have to, we ain't gonna. Forget yeah. about it. Yeah, I had a couple of chiefs that just hated me. Oh yeah, I, I wasn't. The, I wasn't always a popular favorite, and people tell me I could have gone much farther in my career had I just learned to play the game. Because just like now, I only speak up when I have the facts. You there can you, you can never lose an argument as long as you have facts. Look, man, people don't like truth sayers. That's right. You know that. That's the name of my company, Virex. There you go. We are the tellers of truth. Truth sayers. People don't like it. Now, of course, truth is subjective. You know, we, no, it's, uh, not. It's, it's subjective. No, and it's then, not. Uh, if it can be corroborated and, and, it's, it's, and, the, it's, and it's factual, it, it's, you know, they it, say walk truth. in your truth. When they tell these people to come out the closet, they tell them to walk in their truth. Everybody's got their own version of the truth. And that's not to uh, to make light of people's journey in their discovering in their sexuality, whatever. I just use that as an example because that's this is the new America, wow. as you like to say. It's the new America. So I'm using that example. How they transgender tell people got to, in here? They, they, we, they tell we just to, started, for God's sake. They sakes. tell people to walk in. We haven't even introduced you, ourselves yet. You're trying yet. to set it off already. Already, man. Golly. Before before, uh, before we can even get started good. For I'm George love, Holt. For the love of Joan, I'm Gil Contreras. And this is Right Along Radio. All right. And so, um, so yeah, truth is subjective. And speaking of truth. Well, it's not subjective. You hear that? Truth is truth. You hear that? What is that? You hear that galloping sound? Is that guy sounds like it's war the drums. butt naked truth right in town on a horse named Credibility. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're hearing there, people on the podcast. That that was uh, me being playing sound engineer and uh, playing this table. Actually, the legendary rapper Sugar Free actually played this table one time. It, it, he was sitting over there and it was incredible. He did like his little beat thing. I wish I could do it. It was it was it was incredible. He's sounded more like guy. war drums. Too I know that, but that's because it's a Native American to my, perspective. See, that's your truth. That's right. Well, it's not See, my truth. That's your, that's your, that's that's not a, my that's truth. your perspective. That's not my that truth. truth. Okay, so you remember that the the the, pro, the proverb about the uh, blind men and the elephant that uh, like five blind men are touching an elephant and one's got the tail and he says an elephant's like a rope and the other one's got the trunk and he says oh an elephant is like a a hose and the other one's touching the side of the elephant and he goes an elephant's like a wall because they were different things to them because they could only see one perspective of that elephant because they're blind all they can do is feel. One thing. Mm-hmm. So if you ask each one of them what an elephant is, they're going to get entirely different answers. Yeah, but they're blind. Okay, but that, but that's their truth as, <laughs> as, as, as a feedback through their fingers, their sense of touch, and maybe sense of smell, and maybe taste if they went there. I don't know. Hello. So I'm just saying. But but they're blind, so they don't know. They're, they can still know the truth. You don't think Stevie no, Wonder can that, tell you some truth? That, Stevie can't see. Okay, okay. Stevie Jose, can't see. I'm sorry. Could Jose Feliciano tell you some truth? Negative. He can play the guitar, though, all day long. <laughs> Yes, he can. El Ciego. That's right. Uh, so, um, <laughs> El Ciego. <laughs> El Ciego. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we're bilingual here on the uh, Ride Along Radio Show. Sometimes we yeah, we, we could have named the show Chico and the Man. Chico and the Man. There you go, right? <laughs> there you go. Speaking of exactly. Jose. Jose Feliciano. So, listen, folks, um, we like to uh, do social media feedback to start the, uh, start the week. And sometimes we don't have very much social media feedback, but that is not the case of this time. Is that right? Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, I'm going to start now, off. Is this from last week's show? This, this is from last week's show. Oh, okay. Oh, I always try All to right. keep it current, right? We got to, because we tell people, hey, we'll answer your concerns or questions on the air, et cetera, right? All right. All right. So um, one person, and this is the one that uh, I had to respond to because I didn't want to leave it lingering like that. Uh, Chris Style 405 says, speaking to me apparently, mm-hmm. brother, you should have checked him when he said Kaepernick should just pick cotton. Talking about you being he. <laughs> now, now I played it back, and I listened to what you said, and I don't think that you meant it like that. However, um, I'm not going to try to explain that in your absence, but I will tell you what I heard you say. Okay, that if things were so bad, then he should he should he should go he should be picking cotton or something like. So, in other words, if things were as bad as right. he's saying they are, that's, that's exactly, he would be someplace picking cotton. That's exactly but, right. But you didn't say would; you said should, okay. and so people took that to mean that Colin Kaepernick should hang up his cleats. And go out in the field, and, and well, and, he he, may, he maybe should hang up his cleats. 
Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to see him. I don't want to hear from him anymore. He needs to go, he needs to, go to the barber. So he can That's just go, sure. you know, he can go do his thing, whatever. You know, it's free country still. But you, you weren't know, saying though, that he I should I was saying that he, he should, uh, they should take his NFL contracts away and make him go pick cotton. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what I was saying, okay. what I was saying is, is exactly what you just said. That's that, what I thought. And I said it, that. I, I yeah. told the person. I don't think he was saying it like that, but I'll ask him on the air during the next week's show. And, and now I have. And I... People don't know. I've known you for 25 years. People don't know you like that. So people are. Some people are raring to just jump on the slightest. Oh, hey, hey, boy! They got they stay they stay with their fist balled up. You know what? I remember in Eddie Murphy and Delirious, his stand up comedy thing. He talked about uh, when the first time you know when he got a bunch of money, right? Yeah. First time he went to Texas, you know, he was just he was expecting to yeah 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 to, yeah. to run into Don't racism. Go to Texas. They messed up in Texas. Yeah, and he yeah. said he got off the plane and, and the guy came and said, "Sir, can I help you with your bag?" And he goes, "What? A black man can't have luggage?" Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. You know, You're overly sensitive. There are some people who just look for racism everywhere. Sure. You know, they'll walk down the aisle at the supermarket and say, "Hey, how come the black olives are in a can, but the green olives are in a jar? How come? <laughs> That's racist." It's a pipeline to prison. It's just ridiculous. It's a pipeline to the can from the from the olive branch. Speaking of olive branch, we'll, we'll get back there later. Yeah. All right. So listen. A- any other? Uh, yes. Here's another good one. I, I have a couple, but here's another really good one. I like this one. This is from Imani Nile. This is three days ago. Possible future topic: Your discussion of the FBI involved shooting of the Latino. You're talking about in Compton. Mm-hmm. It was said after 9/11 that all law enforcement agencies at all levels were to work together better. Has that occurred? Why is there so much discord between the FBI, local LEOs, DEA, sheriff departments, etc.? What could or should be done to improve these relations? I think the disconnect between these agencies hinders positive progressive law enforcement across the board in this country. And then in parentheses, the CIA is an entirely separate discussion. That's right. Well, the CIA is not, Wait, not a law enforcement agency. They, no, they're not. But, but they are still a governmental agency that's charged with passing intelligence on to law enforcement. Right. And I've and, actually interacted with the CIA while, uh, as a, a police officer. So I know that they're around. But. And, and, yeah, and JTTF, you know, after right. t- the, 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 the fusion centers and, uh, uh, you know. So, but but before we even get into the content, who was it that sent that? Imani Nile from YouTube. I don't know uh, anything other about the person than their name, Imani Nile. That, that, is, a, um, that is an insightful question. That's one of the best questions I think we've, we've ever yeah, gotten, that, at least that, on YouTube. I mean, people that, have called in with some great questions, but that's yeah. one of the best questions I've seen on, that's on a, YouTube. That's a, that's, a, that's a great discussion, actually. It is. Because, well, uh, that's why they framed it, possible future topic. Right. Yeah, spot, yeah. On. I think spot we, on. I think we should do that because, yeah. because there, there's something happening that's not right. You know, and, uh, you know, this week I had really earlier in the week before this thing broke in North, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, I, I was going to send you an email saying, hey, we have to talk about terrorism this week. you got to get a terrorism expert. we got to find out why the FBI, why DHS missed this guy who planted bombs in New York All and over New the Jersey. And then there was no terrorist attack in Minnesota. You know, it's happening almost every day, but it just got, you know, now it's out of the news cycle because of, uh, What's of the happening? rioting. Sure. But um, but that because of that topic, there's something happening that's not right. And, and the JRICs, the the Joint Regional uh, Intelligence Center, Intelligence Centers, yeah. the Joint Terrorism Task Forces around the country, they were supposed to do. They were supposed to collate all this information. You know what? And you, and you mentioned that before um, on the show about how what the job of those things were. I mean, it, it is not uncommon. It used to be. I always knew cops who had clearances because maybe they were attached to the FBI. Right. Task force, but now I know so many cops that have secret and top secret clearances because they are involved with um, intelligence uh, agencies, all the, literally all the way up to the Central Intelligence Agency. Well, everybody has a TLO. You know, every everybody's got a terrorism liaison officer, right? And and so there's a certain amount of clearance that goes on with that. So it did improve after 9/11. But to answer your question about why is there discord between the FBI and local law enforcement, it's usually the FBI that does the investigation of local law enforcement when things happen. And in, right. in the case of the sheriff's department, as we spoke about last week, the, the FBI just got through having uh, the sheriff's department top brass locked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sheriff himself, the former sheriff, is getting ready to go to the penitentiary. The undersheriff's already doing time. And there's a, a sergeant and a bunch of other people that got wrapped up in that state. Right, a captain, a bunch of other. Right. So, so the FBI and the Justice Department have been the agency that oversees the locals and and sometimes local cops go to the federal pen and that's because the FBI put them there. So that may be why when that shooting happened in an area that was controlled by an agency that they just got through going after, maybe we saw some lack of cooperation there or whatever. Right. Well, we need to see uh, we need to see some pressure put on on the local FBI office because uh, I still would like to know why that kid got shot. Right, sure. Well, how, how where's the transparency? It, where, what happened? And 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 where's the riots? 
Where's the where's the protesters? How come nobody cares? How come that Latino kid's life didn't matter? How come there's nobody on the street saying, hey, uh, FBI, if this were LAPD or, or the L.A. sheriffs, we'd have protests everywhere. Well, they shot another guy serving the warrant. It wasn't even him. He, as, we well, say, as they say in East L.A., he didn't even do it, right, homie. Right, right. Or in Watts, I ain't did nothing, no. He ain't even did nothing, no. I ain't even supposed to be here. Because, <laughs> you know, they're on probation or parole. Right, but, right, right. But, but um, you know, if, if that was the case, we'd be we'd be demanding answers. It's the FBI. Not a peep about well, this and, damn and story. Well, and that's the thing. Okay, so let's let's talk about that though. The FBI doesn't really have a track record of shoot track record of shooting people. Period. They don't do a whole lot of that. It's just not the part. They don't do that kind of law enforcement. You know, they do get in shooting sometimes. Right. But if you compare FBI agents, I don't know how many of them there are, but compare them with a comparable size big city police department. That big city police department is doing a whole lot more food, shooting and fighting and chasing. Than the FBI is, so the FBI doesn't have well, that reputation. I, they, or, or, they used or that, they, that used to be true. It used to be that they were more investigative. You know, they were, they were thought well, of. One as, time they were getting trigger time because of bank robberies and all that right. kind of stuff. They, they were auditors with guns. You know, at, at one well, point. used to have an accounting degree or a law degree right. becoming FBI agent. Correct. Right? But even they were shooting it out with bank robbers. But back in but the day. now but now that you know, and in the last you know probably fifteen, maybe even more, maybe twenty years. Um, you know, the, because of the gang, the, the war on gangs and drugs, you know, I remember running into ATF and FBI out in the field back sure. in the day and they'd step out of a black and white with a, you know, with an AR-15. Right. <laughs> right. You know, like, damn. You know, well, how? I'm not saying that they're, they're not out in the field. I'm just saying they don't have the same kind of encounters. Well, they they, they don't, don't have, go to domestic violence situations right. like we do and have they somebody charge you with a knife. Mission. They don't have the same right. mission. Right. So, so they don't have. And it used to be back in the day, we used to say that, you know, anytime the, the feds, whether it was FBI, ATF, uh, DE. You know, every time they did police work, they messed it up, and uh, yep. And then the police had to roll in because we said FBI stood for famous but incompetent. Wow, and that's horrible. I never said that. And we used to say that DEA stood for don't expect anything, because I always thought it was Federal Bureau of Intimidation. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, there's another one. Or the other one was with DEA was drunk every afternoon. That was (laughs) that was the other big one. But uh, that's just us busting on our our fellow uh, law enforcement agencies. But. I don't think you have the outrage because the FBI, it's not like it was LAPD, NYPD, Chicago PD, any of these agencies that people, certain people may feel has a penchant uh, for shooting uh, 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 minorities. That's now, the difference? I think that may be the difference. I'm saying, I'm just throwing it out there. I think that may be the difference because it's not like, yeah, damn, F- FBI shot somebody again. FBI don't really have their reputation anymore. They did some horrible shit in the 60s in terms of uh, the way they set certain things up to go down. But even then, they weren't the trigger pullers. They just kind of made it all happen. So the FBI doesn't have that reputation where people are thinking, well, here comes the damn FBI. Because the FBI is looked at as when something like a Tulsa happens, when something like a whatever happens, the FBI is the one that comes in and then look at it. Well, now, yeah, n- now, you know, Obama's FBI and Obama's DOJ, they're a whole different story. Um, you know, they're. they're uh, so hold, they're, hold on, hold on. When did LAPD come under the consent decree? I, I, I pre Obama. It was pre Obama. I, I don't know. It was pre Obama. Yeah, but so they've been that, they've been on that for a minute. That that was, that was in response to um, what do you call it? I, I'm gonna have somebody come Rot, in and just start King. and start like Rot timing King. how long it takes you to blame some shit on Obama. <laughs> every, every, every every show, well, every if, show. If you're if you're talking, what about, time is it? Eight fifteen, fifteen if, minutes in. Okay. If you're talking about the federal government and you're talking about um, you know just like in this story, I think we're gonna get to it, but the Tulsa Oklahoma story. Oh, that's uh, a big story. Uh, yeah, yeah the officer's being charged. Though. She's being charged with uh, first degree uh, manslaughter. Yeah, we'll get to that though. Yeah, okay. I don't want right. to. We don't want to. You know. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, but, but, you know, yeah. I, I'm just saying, just like the rest to judgment, you know, in Baltimore, the rest of judgment in Ferguson. I hope this is another quote, rest of judgment, close quote. Well, you know what? And then, and then when you get nothing at the end, then they they have be people off. rioting. Then people will be be pissed off. Yeah. Right. Um. So, uh, and we're going to get to all of that. We actually have a. Uh, a couple of little uh, news things, and um, one of them is uh, Google has self-driving cars, as everybody knows. They've been experimenting with that, right? And um, that sounds like it's a, a pretty cool thing, but I was always I was wondering, well, what happens if an ambulance comes by, right? What happens, uh, What is it, does a self-driving car know mm-hmm. that it's supposed to pull over, that it's supposed to yield? How, those cars are pretty smart, but how does that work, right? Well, as it turns out, that uh, there's a new patent that uh, has been filed for by Google, that uh, has sensors, put sensors on the car, and that it can pick up the flashing lights and the siren frequency of a police car and know that it's supposed to pull over, and it, it can pull over safely. 
Uh, I, I think that uh, that's a great thing in terms of safety. I think that um, this is the beginning of the slippery slope of technology uh, that's going to be used for something else eventually. I mean, what, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be something if they started putting this in, these, in every car, just like mm -hmm. all, all, every car you know, has the certain things that only certain cars used to have back in the day? Every car eventually would have this, and so you could steal a car if you wanted to, but eventually the, car, the police are going to be able to make your car pull over because you're, the police are going to tell your car to pull over and the car is going to pull over, you know, eventually. And then we'll have no more pursuits, et cetera. But um, the, so here it is. The, it, but it's only for police cars right now. It's only for police cars. It, I don't know if it's a blue light, red light thing or whatever. What about, uh, what, what about the ambulance? What about it, when, it, they, when, when the ambulance saying, come? They're saying, okay, so. I call it an ambulance. Ambl the blam blam. Uh, <laughs> they used to say that, the blam blam. Uh, a new patent shows car sensors can recognize police lights and will move the vehicle to the side of the road when an emergency vehicle is passing. Beep. Google self-driving cars may feature the ability to automatically pull a car over when an emergency vehicle is arriving, according to a new patent. The patent shows car sensors can recognize police lights and will pull the car to the side of the road. According to Read Right, which is the source for this, Google is conducting tests to collect data to teach the sensors the difference between emergency lights, traffic lights, and sunlight. Police cars are the focus for now, although the feature might be expanded to other vehicles that require drivers to yield. And, of course, that would just be your fire department. Right, and then pretty soon, you know, it's going to be right in the police car. You're going to punch in the, punch in the driver number or the license plate number. And disable the vehicle. And then just disable the vehicle, get in the pullover. Well, you know, at one time, there was uh, a use of a robot. They were talking about, uh, and actually, we do a lot of training out in San Bernardino. You've been out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that big track they had right. back there. I remember they were testing out. Uh, a little thing that they could shoot under your car, right? Like a skateboard looking thing, right? With a, a little uh, EMP on it, right? <laughs> and it could blast an electromagnetic pulse up through the vehicle to kill the computer on the car, or fry the computer on the car, and make the car shut off, right? And they were trying that, but I think they found that it also may have affected the steering controls, right? And Once so the car they, turns off, all you can do yeah. is go. <laughs> so now it's an unguided missile just rolling down the street. <laughs> so at one time, though, they were looking at doing that just because so much crap was happening with police pursuits and people getting killed. It's still happening. Right. But when it really first started happening, they looked at some pretty innovative stuff to, uh, to, to bring that out. So, right. And in response to that, you know, the, the departments have just said, well, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to back off. Right. We're just going to go to Put the helicopter, helicopter up. Right. Let the helicopter follow them. If you yeah. reckon that somebody's not because we were chasing you. Right. And then we saw that in Phoenix. Was that about two weeks ago? A uh, uh, ro guy robs a bank. And they're just following them. They back up off them. The helicopter's keeping them in, uh, keeping them uh, where they can see him. He pulls into an alley. He keeps going back and forth in the alley, waiting for Homegirl to come out. So Flocka comes out, although she wasn't very Flocka. Wow, she why she got to be Flocka? You just profiled her. I just did. That, that's uh, wrong. But then he, wrong. Throws, he throws a bag out of the car. That was the money. That was the money. Baby, take the money. Right. Baby. And I guess he didn't realize that the uh, the ghetto bird was watching him. <laughs> well, the eye in the sky. Not? Jesus. And so he, t he figured he'd ditch the cops probably. And she's waiting back there in the alley when he pulls in. She th he throws the money down. And it's a good thing because that money was about to get real bloody because about five minutes later, Phoenix PD po uh, boxed him in and smoked him. Right. And, um, you know, that was one of those situations where uh, the, the helicopter smoke? caught it all. In, in these politically correct days. I could say smoke. Should you say smoke? Okay. They didn't. I'm sorry. I retract. That's ugly. That's awful. That's harsh. Can we just say that an officer involved shooting occurred? I was going to say they dumped him. Wow. Is that, is that better? They dumped him? It's 323 <laughs> <Okay. laughs> 293. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. They canceled his birthday. Okay, is that oh, better? That's worse. Is it getting worse? All right. You know what? So anyway, um, they uh, so um, that was a situation where the helicopter just backed up and saw everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. And you know, bad guys a long time ago, I thought figured out that you may be able to get a faster car, uh, but you can't beat the helicopter and you can't beat the Motorola factor. Right. Motorola being the radios, the police officers are able. That guy, the eye in the sky, is able to coordinate with all those ground units. He's looking dead at you while you think you're hiding looking dead at you and sending people just to kind of bracket you and cordon you off right. so Phoenix PD corners you somewhere and smokes you. So, you know, that... I, I'll tell you that, you know, uh, police administrators have been thinking about this for years because even when I was still on the job, um, I was the one who actually rewrote our pursuit policy. And the reason why I rewrote it was because the chief said, hey, you know, there's too many incidents occurring out there. I want our guys to be crystal clear about when they can and cannot pursue a vehicle with the lights. Right, the sure. Yeah, and because there's a lot of stuff you, happening. It was pretty limited <laughs> about what you you know when you could do that. Sure, and then guys still were were disobeying it, I, and I I was one of them. Honestly, we still did it, but you know that you were operating at your own peril. Right. But that adrenaline gets going, man, and you want to 
Right. But, it just, you know, from an a administrative point of view, you sure. know, the liability of you, you know, being in an unauthorized code three or unauthorized pursuit and unauthorized, meaning you didn't call it in. Right. You're not supposed to be doing, doing it. it right? Or they told you to back off and you didn't. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, you know, I've been in some uh, some hairy pursuits. Uh, one that was really long. And, uh, you know, while it was a lot of fun. Right. You know, I, I was very fortunate that it occurred in the middle of the night. You know, it's probably three o'clock in the morning chasing the deuce sure and i mean sure. we were flying you know came right off the 110 freeway onto exposition and boy the chase was on i, I had you know probably by nine, usc I, yeah i had probably nine uh because we went into uh, newton division yeah uh, it's so cool I, you know, here here we come southbound on uh uh what is it figueroa yeah so he's flying i'm flying right behind and we're code three we're, we're running hot and down the street, I see about 10 police cars, 10 black and whites. Right, they're coming division. towards you. They're all on the side of the road with their lights on. Right. And so the suspect whizzes by, I whiz by, and in my rear view mirror, I can see all these cars making a U-turn. Uh, I had a, yeah. I, that's when we used to do that. You can't sure. do that anymore. Sure. But we had a line of about 10 police, you know, 10, 12 Hell police yeah. cars. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, man, those, those are the days. I remember my first pursuit. Actually, Mojo was driving. And uh, I was I was passenger man. I just I couldn't believe I was actually in a pursuit. Well, I tell I tell you, uh, one time uh, you know with my buddy uh, you know Reginald C. Stewart, Miss Stewart's favorite son. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we were in a pursuit down in the harbor, and uh, you know, homie crashed and took off running, and yeah. we went up to the car and cleared it, and there was a gun on the seat. So he goes, wait, 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 wait. So you know, we just cut, took the gun, yeah, and sure. took the car, and let homie run off, and we didn't set up a perimeter. And he was like, eh. right, right. We got the gun. We got the car. <laughs> So, but you know, back then I was still smoking cigarettes, right? So I had some cigarettes inside I didn't know you my, were smoking. my yeah, inside my my vest, and uh, uh, and Stuart goes, man, man, he's looking at <laughs> he's looking for a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> he said, man, he's nervous. <laughs> you can't be driving like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun, and he probably um, didn't even smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he did, did that then. night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh man, uh, but yeah, man, good times, good times. Hey, um, listen, so. Um, Three two three two nine three 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 seven five. We uh, have everybody knows what's going on in Charlotte. I think we have enough time to get into that. Producer, we have enough time to get into that before we go to a break, or should we flip around that? Okay, we'll come back to that. Thing. Yeah, because that that's going to that's going to take that's going to take, take some time. Yeah, there's, there's we some... probably should do thirty on that and then thirty on the final one. Actually, well, I don't. So. I, you know, actually, the the Tulsa shooting is you know isn't as you know. I think the rioting and the reason for the riots and the facts that we know now, uh, I, I think that really does bear some discussion. And, sure. And that's where, you know. And that's what I'm hoping people call in when we get to the uh, when we get to the Charlotte, uh, North Carolina situation. And then we get because I think uh, you have Tulsa some video situation. also. And, yeah. I, and I'll tell you, if, if you go to my Facebook page, um, the Gil Contreras investigator, if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see some video that you haven't seen anywhere. And in, uh, in, in just, you know, before we go to the break, I just want to say there was the daughter of the suspect who was shot. Um, yeah, she, she Facebook lived it, right? Yeah, she that, I saw that. That whole right after the shooting. Yeah, and they told and, her he and died boy, and everything. I saw boy, it. Well, I'll tell you, well, she found out on the news, you know, it was people in the, in, the, in, in the crowd. Okay. And you can see as this crowd begins to gather and these people are so angry and they're, they immediately start. Start to threaten to set it off in North Carolina. And this, this is this. It really is the flashpoint. Sure. So you should check out that video. If you, have, you I, I no, saw part no of news it. Edi, no news media has shown it, and and I don't think they will. But it's it, it's it's a pretty incendiary video. I earlier I saw on CNN they showed a clip of her doing the Facebook Live thing where she's kind of challenging the officer, and then she finds out her father's died, and then she just kind of loses it and they cut it. Yeah. So nobody's showing the whole thing. You're right. Um, hey, there's this new book that's out. And uh, it, it seems to be uh, pretty popular. And uh, the name of the book is If I Was a Cop. Uh oh. And it's written by everybody on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Trish? Yeah. Did, 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 was, was Trish part of this? She must have submitted something. Shout out to Mike Duffy for sharing that one with me. That was uh, that was hilarious. Because she already uh, <laughs> sent me, she already posted on my Facebook, Leave Obama Alone. Oh, what? wow. <laughs> Golly. Wow. That's why she's your favorite. She is. She's my favorite. I, You know, it's Terry and Stephanie. I haven't met them yet. I suppose they're all right. But they, are they right. can't. They can't be Trish. They can't be Trish. Sorry. So, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Wait, listen. Uh, Ed in Colorado just been, Oh, what did that, Ed say? That, that's Reginald Calhoun Stewart. <laughs> ah, Ed in Colorado. Shout out to Ed. Hey, Ed, 323-293-3375. That's right. Give a call, brother. Give us a call. <laughs> All right, so listen, That's we are funny. we're gonna we're gonna take a break now because we're gonna get back and we're gonna roll up our sleeves and then we're gonna dive into this. And Boy, and you're not, you're not gonna like feedback. Gil's perspective. I'll tell you that. I'll just tell you right now. 
Well, get y'all, yourself ready. Y'all on YouTube. Yeah, all of y'all. All of y'all. You got to point down because yeah. the comments are coming here. So yeah. uh, everybody they, leaving those comments. Yeah, they yeah, coming yeah. down here. I'm, I'm pointing to the camera. Yeah, I'm talking to y'all. <laughs> all of y'all. See you in a bit. <laughs>
What would happen in Beverly Hills? Beverly Hills PD bends a corner at the corner of Wilshire and Rodeo. <laughs> there's dudes standing around shaking up bones on the corner. What would happen? Is there a bunch of white people? It doesn't matter. There's, there's, there's guys out there they're gambling. They're, they're throwing bones. They're having a dice game on the corner. What would Beverly Hills PD do? Um, if the guys put the dice and the cash in their pocket and just stood up, they're probably just buying away. Shit. Drive by That's away. a felony in Beverly Hills, and you know it. <laughs> just like if somebody was walking on the street drinking a beer in Beverly Hills. And they saw the police. They put the beer down by their leg. If the officer saw it, they're going to swoop on them. In certain parts of Los Angeles, West L.A. Division, Marina Del Rey, mm -hmm. those are things. And we don't want that. We don't want okay. that. We don't want, people driving. we don't want people walking around drinking alcohol. Because that is a priority of the community. In the housing projects, the people don't want us messing with that. They want us stopping the crackheads from stealing their car battery at 3 o'clock in the morning. They want us taking those burglary reports and making sure they're not selling dope. In, in, in broad open daylight. See, that's what I mean by community-based policing. What, and what, what, is it, what do they want us to do about the bounty hunters who are moving dope and guns and money? What do they want us to do about that? They want that? you to do something about that. Okay. Sure. And but that's why they don't want you worried about this about guy it. shaking up these bones on the we're, corner. We're talking about Because there's that. guns and dope and money being moved that you need to worry about that. Yeah, we're and not that's talking what about I'm saying. rolling. That's what I'm talking. That's a, my a point. A $3 dice game? Who cares that's about my, that? Right. But in Beverly Hills, they care, man. In Beverly Hills, they, let, me get, let me get another unit over here. They're on it. Because that's a felony in Beverly Hills. <laughs> And West L.A. and Marina Del Rey, wow. that's a felony. You know what? I'm going to get somebody from Beverly Hills to come in because you'd be dissing them. You, you know, know what? I have some be, friends from that department. You'd be steady dissing them. Man, I, that, that, you know I, what? I, I, think I, use really, them, I use them because they're the exact opposite of where we came from. Yeah, but you're, you're trying to make it sound like, you know, these guys are just out there and, uh, and, and they don't have the amount of, of urban, high, high crime urban area. They don't. Rate, rate. I know they don't, but they still have crime. They, sure still, they do. I, no know, doubt. We're, they do. They're right on the border with all of Los Angeles. And stuff and, passes and through and they try to grab it. Nothing's happening there, but they grab the stuff that comes through. Into their damn city. Or they city. think it's coming through. Hey, we got a caller, though. Into their damn city. Caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? It's the Monday morning quarterback. Oh, oh no. Baby sis Trish. Well, uh, Trish, thank, good night, though. thank you for calling. Sorry, we're out of time now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening? So, hey, yeah, help me gang up on your big brother here as he, as he tries to blame Obama for everything from the weather exactly. to uh, Donald Trump's hairstyle. Thank you. No, I just think that the problem with law enforcement is that while the world has gotten progressive, uh, law enforcement's pretty much operating the same as it always has for the last 30 years. That's what I'm saying. Right. That was my point. You just said it much more succinctly than I did. I think I took the, the long way. The world hasn't gotten more progressive. Only 53% of the country has gotten more progressive. Well, that's there's, our there's, world. There's the a strong 47% that we're, we're still holding on to good old American values. Well, that's is, still is that less than 53, 40, right? Is that the same 47% that sunk um, Mitt Romney's campaign? No, that was, that was, he talked about 47% that would never vote for him, and he was absolutely right. It was 47% of progressives like you and George, and then it was the other 5% special interest, the gays, the yeah, transgenders. You, you, see, don't the, say never. The, 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 all of them. The, those are the ones he was talking Cause, about. Because given, given, given what's happening right now, i take Mitt Romney over either one of those clowns that's in there now. I, I really would. So don't say never. I would never vote for okay. Mitt Romney. Okay. Well, I would take Mitt Romney today. I'd, I'd donate money to Mitt Romney's campaign if he was my, running today. That's my bad then. That's my bad. I'm just telling you. I, I but would, yeah, you know what? Mitt Romney was never my candidate either. I thought he was a poor choice, just like John McCain was a poor choice, just like Sarah Palin was a yeah, poor choice. Yeah, but now look at him. He's looking like but, Jesus Christ but, right now. <laughs> I'd take John McCain at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd take John McCain at this point. So, so uh, but Trish, to your point, mm -hmm. uh, that is because, again, we're like Gil just sat up and said, we're telling people how we're going to police them as opposed to listening when people say we don't want you to do that anymore. Our community yeah, has decided this is the way we want you to police. Yeah, according to Gil, though, it's like it's it's operate as if it's, you know, the 1990s. Or, Even before that. And then you just have to suffer the consequences of the law enforcement agency and the policies. I mean, the, this idea that law enforcement um, policies cannot evolve it's just silly. I just don't think that even as human beings, there's no institution that has finished evolving. Nobody is at their pinnacle. No institution. Right, is and at it never pinnacle. will be. Right, right. Thank goodness, you know, because we're always we're smarter. We're using technology better. We're you're better informed. You know. Yeah, sure. exactly. And and, and and we've seen changes. I mean, from my time coming on the job in 1989. To, uh, you know, when I when I left the job in, in 2014, mm -hmm. you know, that was uh, there was so much evolution that had happened in that period of time. But also, you know, another thing that happens is uh, new officers come in and people with new mindsets come in. And that's also those people are reflective of the of the community as they come in. 
and they don't always just get sucked into that mindset that the law enforcement agencies tend to have. This is why you are seeing some of these. You said progressive police chief. Where that guy come from? Mm -hmm. He came from society, became a police officer, and worked his way up through the ranks. And this is why, you know, some of the older officers that we talk about who were who are great cops, but their mindset and the way they looked at things wouldn't fly in today's world. Right. Well. Yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, because I happen to be friends with both of you on Facebook, you guys, the older your, know, you're um, the shit out of us, man. You know, <laughs> your friends are, and if they're retired LEOs, like, it just shows in their responses. They're very hostile. I think you and Gil have, like, the most hostile Facebook friends um, posting on your sites. And, um, Wait, yeah, the, 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 the most, you know, the, most, the most what? Hostile. Offensive. Oh, like, ho I mean, um, <clears throat> hostile, not offensive, but yeah, hostile. hostile. Okay. Well, you yeah. know what? Uh, they are they are very opinionated, and they know that on our pages, I think that uh, even people who disagree with me know that they're free to express their opinion mm -hmm. uh, on, on my page. I can't speak for Gil with that, but I know that. Uh, uh, my, that uh, on my page, I get a, I get a lot uh, a lot of pushback from you do from Trish and her little progressive and Eddie and, Eddie Goodman, who was uh, a guest on the show once. Yeah, you know and. Uh, and me, and me. They're uh, um, they're they're mostly wrong about stuff. You know, uh, <laughs> Trish is this. Uh, you know, is, she was just talking about institutions evolving. You know, these people believe that uh, gender, how you were born, they believe that's fluid. It could be whatever you think it is, wherever you want it to be. Well, uh, no, no, but gender identity is oh, a, is a human car. It's an artificial construct. Uh, I, I, okay, gender right. roles are, you're, are, you're are either, a construct. Look, you're either a man or a woman. Period. That's it. There, there's no yeah, yeah, there's, but, there's no, no discussion no. to be had. I don't but, mean biologically. But, but I don't want to get into the that roles topic. Of that. We can do that. That's topic. another topic. We can do that topic another day. That's really outside of our, I, our but, bandwidth on but this. But but I'm pushing. But uh, you know, and and today Trish posted some silliness about the institution of marriage and how she thinks it should evolve, and and, and it has. And it, it has evolved. But, uh, okay. It, has it not? Uh, all I'm saying is that law enforcement has evolved. And, yes. and, and, yes. and I was just talking about pursuit policy earlier. There was a reason with that we had to rewrite yes. our pursuit policy because we were trying to evolve and to make it safer for the city and safer for the officers. Uh, but, but, but for the, uh, the, the larger issues, and, and then September 11th happened. And, and because September 11th happened, you know, officers went, if you remember the FBI, NYPD, they, they were hated on September 10th. September right. 11th, they all got killed. You know, all of a sudden, everybody's a hero. Now, everybody in, who wears a badge is a hero. I'm not sure that we should have done that. Right. However. Uh, That's a societal pendulum. But we, we have evolved now. And uh, we've, evolved, we, we've, we've turned police officers now into the first line of defense uh, of, of counterterrorism. Yes. You know, it's, it's the street cops, and you saw it last week in, in New Jersey, in New York, and in Minnesota. It was an off-duty cop who took out the, the terrorists. And, right. And, and, you know, this is really what I wanted to talk about this week, but then, you know... The other stuff happened. Th this sure. stuff happened, and, and it kind of took precedence and took it out of the, uh, um, out of the, the news cycle. But this notion that, that law enforcement has to become a security company because the community wants it, well, sometimes the community don't know no better. You know, police officers are there to do one thing, and that is to maintain order and keep the peace. Right. And, and, no, I don't and, think and, officers should ever put themselves enforce, in danger. And like, it's nonsense about running from a knife. Right, well, you, 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 officers don't choose to put themselves in danger. The radio does. The radio tells you where to go, and it tells you, hey, well, we I mean, by how you respond to that, by somebody's coming at you with a knife, and you right. turn and run. You, you and can't and be you. running away. If the cops are going to run away, what am I calling them for? Yeah, you're right. I, I'll just use I agree my own that. 417 and, I agree and take care of business. <laughs> Trish? All right. So, Trish, listen. Uh, as always, um, you have a, that was a, a great comment, and I, I really wish you'd come back and occupy this seat here, so I could feel like I was at the Contreras Thanksgiving uh, table and watching <laughs> know, you guys right? argue back and forth and stuff. But I wanted to say one last thing: this idea, it, but this unwillingness to see that perhaps law enforcement agencies and policies could evolve, is the reason why there is no clarity. So there are times when. So here you have what you're calling, I think in North Carolina, you guys are calling a legitimate shooting. But then you have... Who's you guys? You and Gil, right? I haven't said, any, I haven't, I haven't said anything about either, either way, either shooting either way. Right, yeah, I said it. I put it on Facebook. Okay, so, well, I was going to say one of you guys did. So, but yeah, I posted the photos of the gun. That's right. It's a good shooting. Go We're ahead. Also blessed. Go We're ahead. all so blessed to have, you know, Ben Shapiro, whatever. Ah. Anyway... But what I'm trying to say is that 
if the if the issues don't ever get addressed on a case by case basis, <clears throat> and if there's a lack of unwillingness to, uh, oh, there's a, I'm not a lack of unwillingness, but an unwillingness to to push policies further to see what what are the policies that could be revised like what would a revision of these policies look like and um then it just the communities don't have any sort of clarity and then everything gets conflated Nobody can sparse out, okay, well, this is this kind of shooting, this is this kind of shooting, okay, well, this is a legitimate shooting. Well, because you're asking for I the mean, community even, to develop technical, on, wait, technical wait, info, even, though, or technical even, expertise. Hold on. Even Cam no Newton said expertise. in his address to the press, he said, we all know that, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but that black, he said black folks don't always do right by black folks. He's admitting that they're, you know, what Gil's always talking about, this black-on-black black crime. So there is there is a willingness to meet halfway, but however, the, but law enforcement cannot be stagnant. It cannot be. It's it, it's the, the your po- the policies are they're problematic, and either you guys need to change your technology, change something has to change either from the technology well, point of view. And it let, isn't can, just Trish, enough that you have yeah. body cams. Trish, can, you can also I tell? Policies that can, need to be changed. Can I tell you what needs to be changed? <clears throat> what criminal behavior. That's what. Well, if we ain't going to change that. That's well, that's that, what. That's called job what, security. That's what needs to be changed. Well, that's called job security. But here's the thing, Trish. You're responding to to what's going on, and and, and, and I'm just well, going to say you that touch on it earlier. Police officers only respond to calls from the community. It's somebody in the community saying, "Not hey, always." Nine one one. Not always. Uh, Sometimes people. But hold on. That's about half wasn't the time. The shooting wasn't the shooting in North Carolina. Wasn't that guy not even the person they were? He wasn't after? even who they were looking for. You're right. That's correct. They were set exactly. up. They, so wait, hold on. Hold on. Well, hold, let me explain. Well, no, no, we're about no. to get into that. Let's not get into that. Let's okay. not delve into that shooting. But let me uh, say this because we got to move on. But let me say right. this to you, Trish. Law enforcement is reactive. That's okay? right. Okay, that's been really part of the problem. Is that we wait until something happens? We have to wait. Uh, well, well, no. I mean our policies. I don't just mean how we approach problems in the field. I mean our policies. After something, after bad stuff happens a couple of times. Then we say, damn, we should probably do something about that. And that's why the chief had you write that pursuit policy, because people were getting killed in pursuits. That's and then we, we say, okay, let's change that now that this has happened. But it's born of experience, and it comes out of history. And we're going to change this because that happened. It's slow. It's slow to happen, but it does happen. And that's where the evolution comes from. So there's an evolution. It's just, it's just kind of slow because it's got to be based on well, What's happening? you're asking people to be patient, and uh, but people are being unfairly targeted. And uh, and how does the guy who did, wasn't even involved originally in in the, they were serving a search warrant? How does somebody like that end up dead? I can explain that. Well, we're gonna we're no, gonna talk about that. That's our it. next. And, start, and apparently, with you, it starts with Obama, President Obama. Oh, that's not, that's not a real explanation. No, I, I can. Okay, we're, we're gonna delve into that right now. So what happened? We're gonna okay. play the video, and then we're gonna talk about it. So then you okay. can hear Gil's explanation, and then you'll hear my take. You on better, it you better go back to the computer, Trish. <laughs> All, All right, right. thank where, you. Good where, talking to you. Hey, where's your husband at? God dang it! He's he, trying to watch television. Oh, poor guy. He's Again. telling me he's missing out. Again, poor Sam. <laughs> All right, thank you. And that was baby okay, sis bye. Trish bye. joining us here on the Ride Along Radio Show. So we actually are going to show the video. It's uh, The title of the story is Police Shooting Sparks Violence in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think we all kind of know what that's about already, but we're going to play the video for those of you who've been living under a rock or maybe you just got out of the joint yeah. and you haven't seen what's going <laughs> or on. Or you've been busy with work like me. Yeah, there you go. All right, so here we go. Who can speak to it? Jonathan Seri is live in Charlotte, North Carolina for us today. So what's the reaction there to all of this, Jonathan? Well, Martha, as you can imagine, this whole community is in shock. There are also call, uh, calls for calm and dialogue to replace the violence that occurred here overnight. Take a look at this Walmart. You can see where they've uh, barricaded the exits and entrances where uh, overnight protesters were trying to break in. Police responded to the scene and were able to chase the protesters away. But overnight, in other parts of Charlotte, uh, police used tear gas to disperse the crowds. At one point, the protesters took their demonstration onto Interstate 85 and could be seen looting from the backs of trailers on several trucks. Police had to temporarily shut down I-85 but cleared protesters from the highway well in advance of the morning rush hour. Bill and Martha. All right. So what's the latest on the police investigation? We just heard some of that outlined moments ago, Jonathan. 
Yeah, Martha, as you heard on that earlier soundbite, they have uh, released the identity of the officer that was involved uh, in the shooting, uh, Officer Brentley Vinson, who also uh, is Africa, African American, as was the man who, uh, who was shot, apparently, by this officer. Uh, the officer's been placed on administrative leave, which is standard operating procedure for this type of internal investigation. The shooting took place at a local apartment complex where uh, police were searching for a suspect with outstanding warrants. And that is where they spotted 43-year-old Keith Lamont Scott. Now, incidentally, Mr. Scott is not the suspect that they were looking for, but cops say that he ignored their instructions, was armed, and then this shooting took place, sparking all of these protests. Now, during the police response to the protests, we have some uh, sounds, some of the scanner traffic, uh, where you can just hear the intensity of what was going on. Take a listen. Command. It'd be nice if we had some more CU officers, 25 down here. We're outnumbered. Okay, everybody listen up. We're going to give a disbursement order. Uh, the charge is going to go around. You're going to do sit. You're going to have to mask up, but you do partners. You've got about 100 people coming up to your CU squad now. Get a uh, squad up here ASAP. I need a squad on foot to double time it from where you are. So as you can hear, a long and intense evening for Charlotte Mecklenburg Police. Uh, Charlotte Mayor Jennifer Roberts is calling on the community for calm. Uh, overnight, she tweeted, quote, the community deserves answers and full investigation will ensue. We'll be reaching out to community leaders to work together. Back to you. All right. We'll see how All right. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the, the instance there. And uh, apparently, mm -hmm. as Trish alluded to, um, the shooting came from... Uh, Officers coming to serve a search warrant on a location, and the subject was outside of that location in a vehicle. And I don't know how um, they came in contact with him. I do know that if you're coming up on a location to serve a search warrant, you want to lock down the area. And you want to see what's going on with whoever's around there because they could be a lookout. They could be what we call a layoff man, which is someone who can be a threat to the officers that are trying to conduct the operation. So I understand why they would contact that individual, even if he wasn't the person they were necessarily looking for because, you know, he could be affiliated or, or, or whatever. You just kind of want to make sure for officer safety purposes. I uh, have heard that uh, the story was he was reading a book when he was shot. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently, though, the uh, the police are saying that uh, no book was found. However, we did find a gun. That's right. So, and, this, and this, so, so, so this is for Trish. So here's, here's how police work works. Um, you have a warrant team, and they're set up on a location. And they're police officers in plain clothes sitting in cars with binoculars. Right. And Scoping we're it out. They're and we're, we're waiting for our guy. And then somebody says, uh, you know, on the unit two, uh, hey, uh, be advised a uh, vehicle uh, parked over there. Uh, there's a suspect sitting in the guy. He just got out of the car. He's got a handgun in his hand. He's walking around the his vehicle. He just got back in his car. That's what they saw? That's what they saw. Okay. So the officers go to contact. It, because in you know even though you want it to be a new America, we can't have people sitting around or walking around with guns. Now I understand that North Carolina is an open carry state. So what's the big deal? So I'm not sure, um, you know, if uh, if they if that very gave, liberal gave gun laws in North Carolina. So anyway, the officers go to make contact with the suspect. And apparently, he got out of the car. They gave him they gave him some instructions. He got back in the car. And then he failed to comply, and then there was an officer-involved shooting. That's how that happened. So it, it, you try to make it like, you know, when, you, when, you try, when one tries to make it that here's this poor old guy sitting in the car minding his own little business uh, with a gun. We don't know why. <laughs> you know, he maybe in North Carolina it doesn't matter. Though. It, well, uh, I don't know. You know, it's open carry. I don't know if they allow you to walk around with it in your hand. Well, that's you know? a different story. So I, I don't know about that. But I do know this. If I'm doing a search warrant at a location for a suspect with warrants and I see a vehicle parked and somebody's sitting in it and he's got a handgun and he's walking around and getting back in the car, I don't know what he's doing there. I don't know if he's parked. But you're going to contact him. But we're definitely going to contact, contact him. that individual. And we're going to find out. And if that guy had just complied with whatever the officer said, because let me tell you something. When somebody has a gun in their hand, if you saw the if you saw the show two weeks ago and we talked about knives for God's sakes and the twenty one foot rule, the the time that it takes to be holding a handgun in your hand talking, George, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, boom, right, just like that. It, it's so fast you don't have time to react. And and this is what happened to actually to one of the officers in in uh, New Jersey 
who who found the terrorist. The, the guy was was asleep in front of a bar, and the the owner after about twenty minutes goes, "Hey, that guy looks like the guy on the news," and he calls the police. They show up. They see a guy sleep. They go, "Is this a homeless guy?" Or right. you know, they go, "Hey, man, wake up! How many times did you do this? Hey, man, wake up! Right, wake sure. up! What you doing? All right? the time. Hey, hey, man, get up! We we got a call about you, huh? What? Boom! He shot the guy in the vest. So wow. th- th- this notion that, you know, police officers are, are, can somehow magically contact people 100 percent safe uh, is it, just it's ridiculous. And, but and that's how that shooting occurred. But what, something you said, though, raises questions. What's that? Plain clothes. So if plain clothes with the vest that says if, police. They, if they were fully marked and you could recognize that's who it, that's what was going on and clearly that, this happened if, in the daytime if we you know watch, that yeah if you watch the video you, the officer that shot the guy I saw the guy the officer who shot the suspect is wearing a bright red shirt and he's got a black vest that says police on it okay a well that, that's clearly marked wearing a black technical vest right that's that, clearly there's, marked there's yeah. no question let me tell you something else people in the hood they know who the police is and who is, who they ain't well typically when, when they see an unmarked car they they know they, but they, now something else you said though this flies in the face of that and it's just you were making a generalization as usual but this is a black officer who shot somebody and yeah. i remember a couple was it last week you said it's only a big deal that's right when a, a white officer, officer shoots a black suspect and, and, and it doesn't matter if they're armed or not. If it's a white officer who shot a black suspect, it's a big deal. Well, this is a black officer who shot a black suspect. That's right. And yeah. now we're seeing uh, the town of Charlotte burn. And so in, in, I'm going to get to the— to So why, it's not a racial. There's no I, racial component I, this I'm going to get—well, uh, first of all, the fact that we even have to say the officer who shot him was black it ma- makes well, it racial. Because, no, because it's separate from the pattern. It, it's it the is, exception that proves the rule. It doesn't matter. The, the, we're talking about cops. We're not. The, the race is not it is a non-issue. Uh, cops, bullshit. Cops don't care what race you are. Okay. They they That's, they, they want to take everybody same. to jail. Yeah. Well, when it comes time to make the decision to take somebody to jail, but what about when it comes time to make the decision to stop you? To see if you need to go to jail. Now, once right. I find you with a bag of dope, it don't matter who you are, you're going. If you ha- but I got to decide who I'm going to stop first how, to see if you got a bag of dope. Sure, but if you're working the university section uh, of uh, Charlotte. Charlotte and it's a black community and everybody that lives there is black and the criminals are black, it's likely that the people you're going to contact are sure, black. of course. So that's not racial well, profiling. And, uh, and so God's in sake. this case, the racial component has been removed. But by and large, we see that that's not the case. And we're going to talk about that in the next the next uh, case we're talking about. But All right. but okay. So in this so, situation, they did find a gun. So they found the gun. Now here's where the false narratives start. And and again, if you go to Gil Contreras Investigator Facebook page, you will see the video that was posted by uh, it was taken live. It was live streamed by Lyric Scott, who's his the daughter, da- the daughter of the suspect who was killed, and and you can see that it, it, it right after the shooting, she comes out of the house with her phone. Right, and, they, somebody and so, told her they shot her father. Right, and so as and it's an hour long video, but it's really wow. it's really worth watching because at once they realize and some neighbor came out and said, "Hey, they just said on the news they shot your your daddy's dead." Wow. Once they said that, I mean, it just turned. Yeah, her whole and, thing. Yeah, you could her tell. And yeah. the suspect's brother, her uncle, who looks like twenty five. <laughs> I don't know. You have a twenty five year uncle, but uh, uh, but anyway, um, as, so, as Sarah Palin, her family set up like that. So Go ahead. as they uh, as they started to uh, things start to escalate very quickly. But the one thing that the family starts to do is they th- they start to threaten. To set it off in Charlotte. Sure. They said, oh, it's going, it's good, it's going to happen tonight. Right. You watch and see. Take off them uniforms. Take off them badges. I don't care anymore. You know, you got guns. We got guns, too. Right. You know, we're going to set it off tonight. And I think the city of Charlotte ought to sue that family. They ought, what? Yeah, I think they ought to sue them for all so of the sue, research. Sue the guy that got killed? The, the, his family for starting the riots. That was the flashpoint right there in that community right, right, after, the, the, right after the officer of So everything occurred. was cool, and there had been no history. In Charlotte, North Carolina, there's been no history there uh, that would contribute to this. It was everything was. I'm, talk, King, I'm not talking about then, history. I'm talking about this incident where they said he was just out there reading a book. But it's and important. Pol- no, it's not important. It is important. What is important is what he was doing in that moment. He was contacted by the cops. The false narrative about this goddamn book started with that family, and they didn't know when she starts the video. She said she was inside asleep when she heard the gunshots. Right. Later in the video, which is an hour long, and I spent the whole day down doing research on this because I want to know what happened. Why are people burning down another American city? And it turns out it's another false narrative. It's that family that doesn't even matter. It it does matter. It doesn't matter to them. And here's why it doesn't matter to them. It It it, doesn't matter to them. I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. I'm saying it doesn't matter to the people who are out there tearing that city up because enough is enough. And people feel like this has happened so many times. Now they don't want to hear what happened. Gil, they don't care about what really happened. 
All they know is the police killed somebody. That's the new America. That's all they know. That's well, the new America. Well, but it's the new America is that way because the old America was so fucked up. All right. And what happened is so many people got killed by the police. And we can blame our our, our, our predecessors in our, in our career who are going out doing shit to people and never got held accountable for it. And this pattern built up to where people had enough. Now it's just like anybody else. Let's say you know somebody who's a pathological liar. Now anything they say, you're going to doubt. And now they're going to get called so, liars so co- even when they are, ain't lying. Cops are pathological no, liars. An example. Let me say as an example. That, that's a poor example. No, it's not because this is what I'm saying. Even if you have a pathological liar who does who lies all the time or has, has a history of lying, maybe not all the time because nobody lies all the time, <laughs> but has a history of lying, you are going to doubt everything they say. And you're going to think they're lying even when they're not lying. So unfortunately, that's the legacy we have inherited or not us because we're out of the game now. But these young coppers that are out on the street now who are trying to do the right thing, who are doing their jobs in earnest, have inherited this legacy of brutality from those who came before them, who were doing awful shit to people, particularly in the American South. So people are sick of that, and now they don't want to hear it. Now, why are you going to burn up your own city? I don't know. And you lose all credibility to me when you start stealing shit. Because what does you knocking over a a footlocker, uh, or a uh, Charlotte Hornet merchandise store. I don't know why you'd want that shit anyway. But why, what is the you knocking over a Charlotte Hornet merchandise store have to do with that man being killed? See, it dilutes the it dilutes the message. That's right. And it shows that some people are just criminals, and now this is right. to act out in a criminal manner. And when normal people like me, but people are still so pissed n- off. And normal up. normal people who are not involved in criminal activity, when we see this on the news, I was watching the news coverage last night. I was just shaking my head. I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" Yeah, well, and it's happened t- time and time again. And then today, when I got all the story, got the facts, and understand that that false story started with the family. They're the ones that but it started. Don't matter. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it it doesn't d- matter. No, it does matter. It doesn't matter. Then. It does matter because it's not it, about that one it, guy. It matters to the people who are not involved who have to live in that city. Just like and the it, L.A. riots it, were not about Rodney it, King it matter, alone. It matters because now the governor had to call in the God dang National, National Guard, Guard sure. to take control of that city because the people in the university district are out of control. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I agree with you. They shouldn't be rioting. But I'm just telling you, they're pissed off and, the, and it's a historical reason they're pissed off. We're going to go to a break. Um, we will be right back here on the Morris Media Network on the Ride Long Radio Show. And hey, Put this number in, 323-293-3375, so you can speed dial when Gil starts talking shit again. Uh, we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> All right. And that was Rage Against the Machine with Boom. Bulls on Parade. They were just in, uh, here in Southern California in Inglewood at the formerly fabulous form. I don't know what they call it anymore, but it's, a, it's it was formerly fabulous. It's pretty nice again now, I hear. So um, we were talking about... <laughs> Before we go on. Okay. I got, got a comment from uh, Ed in Colorado. Yes. yes. Gil, I'm behind you about 99.9% on what you said this evening. You need to get George to tone it down a little bit. He's, <laughs> he's getting radical again. <laughs> well, Ed, you know, Ed's in Colorado, so Ed's probably real mellow right about now. And, uh, and we'll leave it there. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so, so, so just sit back and take a couple more puffs. <laughs> Puff puff, 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 give. Puff, puff, pass. Puff, puff, give uh, Ed there in Colorado. And I know he's uh, sitting back there laughing and raising his bottle of beer at me. Yeah, buddy. In fact, I think the last time uh, I was out there, I was, what did we do? I got tours out there. They got cores in Colorado. Yeah, so we drank yeah. tours. So, uh, yeah. So, listen. We, uh, we were talking about the situation in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and, and people rioting. And, you know, people riot historically – for political reasons, people riot when they feel powerless, right? That that's how that's why you don't see other groups rioting who may not feel as disenfranchised. It doesn't excuse it. It doesn't mean that it's it's acceptable. It doesn't mean that it's okay. I'm just talking about why people right now. I don't understand riots like the Huntington Beach surf riots. I, I don't know exactly what that's all about besides just mob mentality gone wild and alcohol. Yeah, a- a- alcohol. A- a- alcohol, right? Alcohol, right? right. A- a- alcoholic. Uh, the alcohol, alcoholic beverages. 390 white people. And so, so I, you know, that is a, a riot. That is not civil unrest in terms of people are pissed off about a particular thing. It's just kind of, it's become a tradition. Or when Mexicans go crazy because Mexico wins in, in softball. Or, well, or right, football. or we saw the Laker riots when back when the Lakers were good. Yeah. Uh, we would see uh, people tearing shit up downtown L.A. Yeah, that was my people. You could say it. There's a bunch of Mexicans out there. Well, a lot of cra- people. Hey, L.A., the, 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 well, soccer, yeah. But the Lakers had everybody no, not, out not there. Not soccer. Uh, I'm talking about the Lakers. Thing. Los Lakers. Yeah. 
We haven't seen we haven't seen Los Doyers win anything Los in a Doyers. long time. Los Doyers. Well, ever since for, ever, ever since Valenzuela got sent back to the minors, why <laughs> we don't really care no more. <laughs> so, uh, so um, you know, but people are writing because they feel like I'm angry. I have no outlet. Some or, people, or or it's an excuse for criminal behavior. Or I need a new pair of Nikes. Well, that, exactly right. Sure. sure. So that's what that's sure. why when you when you do things like break into the Charlotte Hornet store and again. I don't know why you would even be bothered with that. What are you going to – you're actually going to wear that? Stop it. Just stop <laughs> you're it. You're actually going to wear Charlotte Hornets jersey? Whatever. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, uh, but, you know, you're breaking in, you're stealing stuff, and, and man, that's got nothing to do with that man laying dead in that morgue there. That's got nothing to do with that police officer that shot him. It's got nothing to do with anything except your own criminality. So all it does is it it, it dilutes the message. It, uh, it, it takes away from credibility. It is a uh, – it's a bad look, and it's stupid. And and people who are there, you know, these things aren't organized, unfortunately. They're not organized, so well, you, this, you don't this, really have a command post calling back people from looting. This one was, and it was the family. They they, they said organize they, it. They said they were going to set it off. They were going to. They said, "You don't know who we is. We rode deep." That's what he said. The, the brother. That's what he said they on the like that. He said, "We rode deep." That you don't, you're not, like that. You don't know who you, who you mess with? Okay, but you, you know, know what? How but we what we see we Florence deep. and Normandy. We, Florence we and fin- Normandy was a flashpoint, but that wasn't organized. That, no, Florence and Normandy wasn't talking about this one, for God's sake. I was just saying, how was it organized? They sent out flyers or something? Yeah, or yeah they did. Text message. Flash Facebook. mob. Flash mob. So we, set it off right, tonight in Charlotte. Right. We're going to set it that's off. That's possible. And if they we did go, that, if that's true, then there'll be how there'll be some accountability. There should be. I'm telling you, they should be prosecuted, and then the city should sue them. They're not going to get 10 cents from these people, but they should sue them just to show that until you understand what happened, it was a tragedy what happened to but that guy. You ain't going to get a jury in the world to give the city a dime when that man was shot, especially if there was a legally owned pistol, if there was no reason uh, in if most people's did, mind, if to shoot he didn't that comply man. and the gun was in his hand, uh, look, if the gun, if the gun was in his hand, sure. that's that because the gun the ended gun up on the floor. I, uh, somebody mentioned something about an ankle holster. Did you hear anything about that? They had an ankle no, holster. No, I didn't hear about that. Uh, that was mentioned to me earlier today. I don't, I, didn't, I don't have that corroborated. I don't know though. about that. So all I know is the gun's there. We, we saw it in photos. You know, and that's one of those things where the shooting itself was, was the shooting itself wasn't caught on video. Well, it was, but they're saying it's not usable. Right, uh, you you don't see the vi- you don't see the gun in his hand in the video because the body cam footage. Right. I guess the way it was taken, it's too shaky or whatever. And, you and can't this, really this see is, the gun. You know, in the this man's is the hand. new America for this is policing in the new America. We thought, oh, I know what we do. We just put video. Nobody will believe anything until they see it on video. And then if the, if if what they see on video doesn't fit their narrative, they just miss, dismiss the video. Right, and we've seen that happen too. We've seen people say, well, video evidence is one thing, and that's true. Because video evidence only shows one perspective. That's right. Unless you've got multiple perspectives. Like in the, in the video we're going to show later, uh, there's more than one perspective of it. And that helps you kind of piece it together. But, you know, unfortunately, man, it used to be that police officers were cloaked in the mantle of believability. Remember that? Uh, what was that? A couple of shows we talked about, shows ago we talked about that. The mantle of believability. And, uh, and, and people would listen. And if a police officer said something happened... A certain way. Well, God damn it, it happened that way because the policeman said so. Mm-hmm. But we, we, we messed that up. OK, police officers ruin that. And I say we collectively, because although you and I don't get up and lie on the stand or lie in police reports, enough of our brethren did it and got caught doing it so that now people aren't really willing to take I, our word like they used to. I I I don't where I don't know where you get this. Uh, you, you don't know, know where I get the police. Are there, are there cops sitting in prison right now for perjury? There, don't we both know, hold on? Don't we both know a guy that got done for perjury? Yes. Okay. Was he a so, cop when he perjured himself? It happens. Yes, but it, it doesn't okay. happen in the way you're presenting it. It doesn't happen that all of us we all conspire every time we make an arrest. No, I just said oh, that. I know. Well, here's how we're no, going to say that. No, no, no. Here. It's happened enough times though. Those are outliers, as you like to say. That's right. But it is not as much an outlier as, as, as you'd like to make it. I think we both know that there are people who stretch the truth, who uh, test the lie and pencil fuck people and everything else. Uh, and, and they talk about things that happened that, in a way they did not happen. We've had officers plant dope on people. That's look, just the truth. Uh, There's cops sitting in prison for that. So what I'm saying is the reason we no longer have that mantle of believability 
It's because we wore it out. Well, let me tell you something. I've also worked as a criminal defense investigator on criminal cases. And here's what I can tell you. 99.9% of police officers out there are arresting the right people for the right crime sure. in the right way. Sure. Every time every time you go to jail to talk to somebody about his case, hey, man, uh, can't you just get me off? Uh, well, I, right. looked, I, looked I agree at, with you. I looked, at, I looked at the video, Holmes. Yeah, it was you. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but, yeah, but, still, but the officer you... didn't do this. Uh, the officer didn't read no, my I, rights. I agree with you. No, the no. Officer, those, but those outliers are huge, though. The officer didn't drive me through uh, uh, Church's Chicken to get me a little box. <laughs> 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 Those outliers are huge. Hey, we got a we got a call. Caller, what's your name and where you calling from? Hello, caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Okay, I guess we uh, guess we dropped the call. So uh, maybe you'll call back. But turn your radio down. Yeah, turn your house down. <laughs> uh, but but you know what we have is a situation where yes, it is. It's not the norm for a police officer to lie. To have a liar as a police officer is not the norm. But it happens, and it's happened with grave consequences. And so we had that taken from us because, like everything else we do as cops, we will get some something good and we'll burn it out, okay? And that's everything from, from discounts to, uh, to, to, to whatever, okay? We'll get something good, man, and we burn it there? out. Why would you have to go there? So though? we have this credibility. We have this believability. And, uh, and and it was burnt out, man, to the point where a lot of people just don't believe yeah, us it's, it's overdone, and it's part of this false narrative. It's out of control. Well, that ain't Co- false. I just I, named I, I just named somebody we know. It, it, so without how, he was, he I was, didn't he name was, him, but I will. You want to, you want to say his name? I said I I will. If you <laughs> act like act like you don't exist, I'll name him. <laughs> of course, he. I've already acknowledged okay. that he exists. I'll, I'll name the little fella. Shit. <laughs> 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 <Shit. laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that guy got done for perjury because he lied. You're killing, you know, and, and, and the dude lied on the stand, man. And he actually was trying to help somebody and when so, he lied. So, that was the irony of it all. And so all law enforcement are no, now liars because he is. No, of course not. But that guy, a situation like that, doesn't help the rest of us. For the love of Joan, it doesn't help the rest of us when somebody lies like that. And so that's just one instance. And that's just I use that guy because we both know him, both know him a long time. Okay, but so, but so there's other cops out there who've lied, man. So they had cops sawing off shotgun barrels. To get it below the legal minimum so they could book a guy for having a sawed-off shotgun. We've had that happen right here in L.A. County. So we've done shit to remove that mantle of believability. As a result, people don't believe us anymore. But uh, we, we need to move on because I'm looking at our, uh, well, our timing wait, here. Wait a second. But so what about when the community lies? Well, the what about when, that what happens about when the time. Cri- What happens when the criminal lies? They're criminals. Nobody expects anything different from them. And thank oh. God they hold us to a different standard. Well. Thank God people don't expect – people don't want – don't think it's okay for cops to lie. Well, here, here's, here's thank what, God they they hold us up different than they hold up criminals so far. Here, thank here, God. Here's the new America because of this false narrative. The uh, Massachusetts Supreme Court just uh, decided the other day that uh, black suspects uh, can run away from a police officer because of this historic uh, racism thing that you're talking about all the time. Uh, so and they can. Yeah, they they get to run away now. Now they get to and run. So it's no longer a crime. It's, it's no, no longer, longer a crime. What, delaying or resisting. Yeah, they get to run to their safe space in Mass. In Massachusetts. Oh wow! So so normally our producer who doesn't weigh in on these topics, she's all fired up now, probably because her legendary daddy's in the house. <laughs> but she said they get shot in the back when they run. Uh, well, not in Massachusetts because they get to run to their safe space. And it's. Well, you know, it used to be legal in, in California. You could shoot a, a, a fleeing felon. You still can shoot fleeing felons, but the category or the description of fleeing felons be wide open. Oh well, we don't we don't want to call them felons anymore. Well, they're, listen, they're, let's, they're let's move on to our next uh, our next show, however, our next topic, because we don't have a whole lot of time. However, on my Facebook page, everything is there. All the facts that will dispute George is all there, so <laughs> you can find it on Facebook. He cherry picked a bunch of stuff and put Gil, it up there. Gil but. Contreras, investigator. So listen, Thank uh, you very much. back to social the social media thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the Terrence Crutcher shooting. And I got a lot of pre-show engagement on this one, uh, one from our, our favorite uh, Teresa Dash and uh, one from uh, my personal favorite, Seymour, and, uh, and uh, my friend Jeff Shelton, who had Seymour and Jeff Shelton kind of went back and forth a little bit about this yep. story. Did you see that? Yeah, buddy. It was epic because they both, uh, they both got real slick, uh, uh, witty dialogue, <laughs> you know, so they like to go back and forth. They're both uh, bright and educated, and uh, they, they hit he, back and forth. I, I think he even called her C. Less. So. <laughs> he called, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. That's what we called But her. she had a good comeback on her. It was nice. Anyway, uh, my Facebook page isn't open like that, so if you don't know me, you have to request it, but then you can see it. But maybe uh, uh, Teresa or C will uh, will post it so somebody can see that that going back and forth. But the topic was, and the question I was asked was, what do I think or what was my take on this uh, Terrence Crutcher shooting in Oklahoma? 
by Tulsa, Oklahoma PD. And at the time, uh, I, I had not really seen what was going on. Then I read up on it and I said, I'm going to hold off until the show. Because honestly, we do like to keep this, these conversations organic. Uh, we, don't, uh, we talk about what we're going to talk about. We agree on a topic or we say, hey, let's talk about this. Okay, cool, let's talk about that. But we don't sit up and really debate it because we want you guys to get the unadulterated, right. unfiltered, uncut, stepped on zero times uh, plus, experience. I, plus, listen to us I, bicker. Plus, I don't want George to try to, uh, you know, undo my fact. With he don't want me to go run and get some facts. Uh, some See, nonsense. He, he don't want me to he run and go get some he facts. He's going to pull so. up the puff post or something and try to try to do it. Well, uh, you know, uh, you know, we don't, but we, hey, you show up armed. If you show up armed, you don't. You know, that's just how that is. So we're going to play the video of this uh, police shooting an unarmed Oklahoma man uh, named Terrence Crutcher. Apparently his vehicle had stopped because he ran out of gas on a highway in Tulsa. Yeah, I don't know what, but it was a uh, disabled vehicle. Yeah, disabled vehicle in the middle of the road. Uh, someone had called 911 about that vehicle, but the uh, officer, the first officer to respond, was actually on her way to a domestic violence call. She made the observation. She gets out, and then uh, I guess the 911 call comes out, or she saw it on her way, so she stopped to deal with it. Other officers show up, and um, we're, we're going to roll this footage, and then we'll come back and talk about it. I'm going to hit the recorder. This guy's still walking. And following commands. Not for taser, I think. That's a good feeling that's about to happen. That looks like a bad dude, too. To be honest with you. Which way are they facing? Police one, they're facing westbound. Uh, I think he may have just been tasered. Shots fired! Ooh. 321, we have shots fired. We have one suspect down. I we need, need to end here. They need to get this uh, eastbound closed down if they could, because they're not going to be able to let anybody. Okay. Uh, police one, we're going to need to get eastbound 36th Street North. Actually, we're just going to need 36th Street North shut down uh, at Lewis, and then probably back off about three or four blocks to the west of there. I'm going to go up a little higher now, like here. Okay, so um, that was a combination of footage. We spoke earlier about uh, the, in the first situation in uh, Charlotte, there was unusable police footage, or inconclusive, I think they called it. Or uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It was, uh, anyway, it couldn't arrive at a definite conclusion, so they're not sharing that video. But in this case, we actually had dash cam footage from the units on the ground, the police car, and we actually had footage from the airship, the uh, helicopter, police helicopter from Tulsa PD. Right. And putting those two together gives you a much better picture uh, of, of what's gone down. And um, one of the things that people were going back and forth about was whether this was a situation where the guy had his hands up when he was shot or had he had his hands up and he put him back down and he was making a furtive movement and that's why he got shot, et cetera, et cetera. And I saw both sides of that argument as people were talking about it and I had yet not yet seen all of the footage. Now, one thing is part of the problem is nobody wants to keep an open mind anymore. And I, I get it, okay? People are sick of their side being attacked one way or the other. But, and one of the reasons I withheld talking about this is I wanted to wait and see what was going to come out as they release more and more information. But you have people who always take the police side. You have people who always take the suspect side. Trish. And, uh, <laughs> or Gil. And uh, so, so you have that situation where people aren't being open-minded. And I think looking at this video now, and, and listening to some of the facts that have come out about this, uh, it, it appears that uh, it comes as no shock to anyone when uh, they announced that the uh, the officer was going to be the officer who shot that uh, gentleman was going to be uh, was going to be charged today. And in fact, this was so shaky. Listen to this. Donald Trump expressed concern about it. I mean, let me read this from Associated Press. He was in Ohio at a church event. OK. So at the end of the Ohio church event organized by members of his diversity coalition, Donald Trump's got a diversity coalition. All right. Trump was asked about recent high profile police shootings in Oklahoma and North Carolina. Trump said 40 year old Terrence Crutcher, the one we just saw, who was killed in Friday's Tulsa, Oklahoma shooting, looked like this is a quote from Trump, looked like he did everything you're supposed to do. And he looked like a really good man. Donald Trump goes on to say this young officer, I don't know what she was thinking. 
I don't know what she was thinking, but I'm very, very troubled by that. And he called it a terrible situation. Now, it's interesting that he says he looked like a really good man, did everything he's supposed to do. The guy, the, the helicopter the officer in the airship says he looks like a bad dude. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you get that from 800 feet in the air, that he looks like a bad dude? What do you know about him? What can you see in the twilight from 800 feet in the air that tells you that he looks like a bad dude? So there, there's all these questions floating around about that. But now that the officer, again, has been charged with manslaughter in that shooting, um, I, I think I, and I hope that those who uh, are rushing to to one side or the other would take a step back and say, let's look at, as Gil would say, the facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, I, I'm going to tell you, uh, if if the prosecutors in Tulsa moved on Officer Betty Shelby to to uh, to charge her with a crime. Uh, just to avoid riots like what they sh they're they watching in North Carolina. Right. And so they just say, you know what, let's just charge her. This yeah. looks shaky. And I'll tell you. It, They've it, done her a terrible disservice if that's looks, the reason they did it. It looks questionable. Um, he does walk back to the car with his hands up until he gets to the vehicle. And then, you know, his hands go down. And then that's when the shots are fired. Now, I don't know what she perceived as a threat. You know, is that going to justify the de use of deadly force? Because somebody tried to deploy a taser, apparently. Somebody did deploy a taser. So, taser, so he, was, uh, he was tased and shot at almost simultaneously. Jesus Christ, that's awful. So, um, Got to so, be an awful experience. So I don't know. but and, and, I, and, you know, it would be nice if we could just say, wow, that doesn't look good, but I don't know. So let me let the investigators do their job. And then when we have the facts. Nobody says that. Then we can say, oh, okay. Right, nobody says know, that. But that's what we do. And and thank God because, that you know, when, when, when there's an officer involved shooting the one thing that both george and i do as experienced investigators is we say okay before i even get on the radio and start commenting about stuff i want to make sure that i know the facts about this i want to right. make sure what, that whatever's that, available at the time that i understand it from a policeman's perspective because that's what we're supposed to bring to this show right. not a civilian perspective i'm not supposed to you know uh be boohooing for criminals out here i'll leave that to george <laughs> and trish uh, but my, my my role here is to bring a law enforcement perspective as i understand it from my experience and training on these different issues that we talk about. So in this shooting, it, it, it does look questionable, but for right now, I don't know because I don't know what she perceived. And 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 if this is a rush to charge her to avoid rioting in Oklahoma, um, I and you end up with another Baltimore or Ferguson where there's no charges or there's no uh, conviction, no conviction, stand by right. the standby. Well, here's the thing, though. Her... What she said, apparently, did not line up with what was proven later. And it may not have lined up. It doesn't line up with what we see. I'll agree with that. And it, it doesn't right. line up with what I and, see. And, and it may not have lined up with what her fellow officers on the scene saw and said. Mm -hmm. We don't know yet. That's possible. It's po and, and you know what? And if, and if these officers, who may have learned from what happened in Chicago, where like 13 officers get rolled up because they tried to corroborate uh, the Laquan Scott shooting, um, if if uh, if these other officers said now now hold on now, I don't know where she got that from because that's not what I saw. Right. Then we may have reached a turning point. We may have reached a turning point in uh, police culture. We may have reached a turning point in in police community relations. We may hopefully maybe we can usher in a new era of detente between the police and the community in terms of officers willing to say that was wrong what that officer did. I'm not gonna. I, I, I don't know. I don't know that it's so much a, a new day in law enforcement, but I'll, I'll tell you this because there was a shooting in Venice right here, Venice Beach, a homeless guy, LAPD, two officer, and and when the investigators asked the officer's partner who did the shooting, right. they asked him, "Why did your partner use deadly force?" You know what the officer said? He said, "I don't know. I don't know why he shot that guy." That, that was, right. Sure. That was, his, that was sure. his response. But in my experience, that occurs when you when you have an officer and everybody knows him who are trouble. They just don't do it just quite right. They're always trying to, you know, and you go, okay, well, one day they're going to, they're going to make their own bed. And then, and own. then she did that and they go, oh, well, there it is. Yeah. Right. See, and it's See too bad for to die. See hey, you, we got, we got a caller late in the game, but uh, we do have a caller. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? This is Ed. Ed. Is this Ed from Colorado? Yeah, and I'm not smoking any doobies. <laughs> <laughs> Big what, Ed. What's going on, Ed? The world. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So now, uh, did you see this shooting, this uh, this uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma shooting? Yeah, I watched it on numerous occasions today. Watched it several times. Now, now for people who don't know, Ed Ed is a uh, retired police supervisor and was in the game for a, a number of years and uh, goes way back with both Gil and myself. We were both rookies at the same time. 
Oh, wow. 30, yeah. 33, right? 33 and a half, I think it was. Jesus Christ. God, I, 25 was long enough for me. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> and, and, and in two different states, by the way. So Ed, what, Ed, you help, me out, help me out here, Ed. Help me to school George. What did you think about this shooting in Tulsa, from what you see in your professional opinion? She panicked. She panicked. And, and you say that because you, you heard her voice on the air after she shot, or, or just what you could see from the, the, the airship, or what? Well, it's from her voice. She panicked. Um, and if you're looking at that, there's no, no he, he wasn't reaching for any weapon that I could tell as far as the vehicle was concerned. Well, you know what, Ed? Also, now it looks like the window was rolled up. The window uh, was up. Yeah, so up, with the window right. being up, you know, because her story was he was reaching into the car, but the window was up. So, And there's blood on the window mm. that's rolled up. So that that's why I say her story doesn't match what is starting to come out now, and that's probably the there, main reason they decided to do her. There again, I'm not going to Monday morning quarterback or sure. respect. Because there's there's a certain angle that you can't actually see what right. he is doing. Right, 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 sure. But that's where those other officers on the scene who are on the ground, who got eyeballs and looking right at it basically like she's looking at it, and they're there. They're they're 15 feet from the guy, and they're, they're seeing, they're hearing, they're smelling everything. They know what, what the tempo is right there, as opposed to us looking at it from the air, from dash cam footage, whatever. So I think the tale is going to come from those officers who were there yeah. and see what they have to say about it. And, and, and you know, the fact that uh, they decided to go ahead and, and file these charges may indicate that every officer there didn't back what she was saying. It well, may. we haven't we haven't heard from the other three that were there with her when she uh, shot. Well, we haven't, but I bet you the DA has. Well, or, or at least has. the OIS investigators. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's going to be interesting, man, to see to see how this uh, how this plays out. Now, 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 real quick, Ed, because uh, you're in that in, in the state of Colorado, what is uh, how is the legalization of marijuana change? Uh, what's happening out there? And this is kind of a left turn, but I don't get you on the air very long, uh, very often. Or I actually, I, haven't, I don't get to talk to you very often at all. So now I got you on the air. What does that look like in terms of what difference have you noticed uh, from cop to retiree to watching it all go down? Well, I I, I kind of try to stay away from news anymore. It's uh, too depressing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we kind of got to immerse ourselves in it uh, doing what we're doing here. <laughs> I have seen a lot more uh, vehicles out here with California plates on it. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. All of a sudden now, right? Yeah. Hey, let's go to Colorado. And, yeah. and I've, had some, I've had some phone calls from uh, people that will remain, uh, well, let's just say they, we know them. Yes. Uh, Asking me if I'd make a trip out to California. Wow. And bring a little something, something with you? Well. <laughs> Schedule one narcotic still. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, yeah, I was just I was just curious about that because you, you have a unique perspective. Having been a cop here and being a cop there and been there before the legalization to watch and, and with legalization pending here, I guess that's a, a ballot initiative in November, right? It, it is, yeah. And, Ed, I just well, want to say, can, can, Hillary's, can Hillary Clinton count on your support in November, sir? <laughs> When pigs fly. <laughs> all right. All right, Ed. Hey, man. <laughs> Stay safe. And thanks for calling, man. We're going we're gonna to have to sit down one day and have a beer. Yeah, buddy. I, I, I need to plan a trip to come out and visit. Yeah. Oh, don't bring anything with you. I'll bring, I'll bring some Jack with me. There you go. Boom. There we go. Exactly. And a cigar. Right. We'll get the cigars. <laughs> all right, brother. Talk to you later, man. Thanks for calling in. Have a good one. All right, you too. <laughs> so that was Ed from Colorado, who's Ed from uh, Colorado. Who, uh, hits us on our text nor or regular as he watches the show. Yeah, so I'm actually got to have that dude call in, man. That's, Ed that's and I stuff. were uh, we were rookies. Uh, I think we were hired like the same week. Uh, that's when we met. We were both boots. So. Wow, that's yeah, a long time, long, long time. time ago. So listen, folks. Uh, again, you can leave your comments on YouTube right down there where I'm pointing, uh, or you can go on a Facebook page. Right Along Radio Show's got its own Facebook page. You can go on there and leave leave your uh, your comments. If you want the ugly truth, you can go to Gil Contreras Investigator on Facebook. You can, yeah, you can do that. Gil's got an ug- open page. The ugly truth. Uh, you, we're on Twitter at uh, Right Along Radio. We are on Instagram at Right Along Radio Show, or you can send us an email at Right Along Radio Show at Gmail dot com. If you have a uh, a suggestion for a topic or whatever, I really like that one about the FBI. I do. I, I really, we should research that one. Yeah, and find a that's, guest that's probably going to gonna happen there. So thank that's you. That's a good one. Yeah, much much appreciated. 
So uh, until next week, I'm George Holt. I'm Gil Contreras. And this has been Ride Along Radio. Radio. Later. Bye.